and welcome to the first video of the MFM Reaper channel. This video will show some of the ways I use hotkeys and MIDI to control Reaper. All the plugin parameters are controlled by the SL25, but you could use any MIDI controller to do anything that you see in the video. I've written action list commands to make this possible, and I'll be showing those in future videos. Being consistent with your allocation of controllers makes it so much easier to use. I always use the 8th fader as volume on the plugin and the bottom right hand corner is CC85 as bypass. The Mackie controls the main program itself but runs off CSI not MIDI and I'll look at that in later videos. I also use the two expression pedals on the uh, FCB1010. The left one I use for zoom horizontal and the right one I flick through the grid. I'll show you. So you can zoom to check your fade in, or zoom to check your fade out. It's a lot faster zoom than with keys. I'll zoom that with expression pedal 1, and then with expression pedal 2 I'll increase the grid. So let's have a closer look, and pedal down for more grid division, and then back up to grid 1 which is 1 bar. Expression pedal 1, zoom back out. Hotkeys 4 and 6, moving the audio left and right. As I increase the grid division, but keep tapping the hotkey the same speed, it's moving finer and finer with the grid division. An audio foot break. So you don't crash your audio. When I draw the same length of loop out with the mouse, I can't get that to work for some reason. If I draw the loop out with the jog wheel again, then these selections work again. They are very short fade-ins. The jog wheel moves the edit cursor and the fade into button will reset the fade to the edit cursor. That view is very magnified. When I zoom out, you'll see that turning the jog wheel at the same speed covers more bars. So the horizontal zoom is on expression pedal 1, and I'm going to rotate the jog wheel to draw out the time selection. As I magnify that with the foot pedal, it becomes more and more accurate. Or I can go to another section and zoom in this way. It's a nice quick way of cutting loops. If I hold the mouse over a track and press any of F13 up to F19, I get my plugin windows on contextual toolbars. They're separated up into types. That's compression. That one's some reverb and delay. And I've got my mastering type effects on the last button. I'm going to open a compressor. Button 3. I'm going to pick the townhouse. And why isn't it open? Because I'm going to open the plugin from the controller where I'm going to control the plugin from, with one of two buttons, which open in read or open in latch. We'll look at read first, as that's more of a kind of set and forget thing to open the plugin, controller dials with the parameters, and use your controller that way. The button to open read on the controller there. The plugins come up as a focused window, so I'm able to control them straight away. And the SL25 is all programmed and named. There's a little editor for that, which is really simple to use. And all the compressors work on this template. Whichever way the parameters are laid out on the actual VST, I still program exactly the same parameters to the same place on the SL25. Latch mode, despite my elongated description, is still just going to be one button. So this button will bring up the plugin, and as you adjust the parameters on your controller, that will draw envelope lanes named and named after the plugin as well. So I use the other button that open does in latch mode. If I move a parameter that'll come up under the track as an envelope lane and you can see what the parameter is by name. 
and you can see what plugin it's come from. You can assign the parameters of the VST to communicate a few different ways with the uh, MIDI controller. The most important one is to have enable only when effect configuration is focused for all your VSTs. Let's have a look at more than one effect in the effects chain window. Open these in read. I can toggle down through the effects and it's circular, it will just rotate back to where it was. Usual stuff, attack and release. I think I can change, yeah, change the types there. Uh, tombra, tombra. There, clean and driven. I always have drive on this, whatever plugin it might be, if it's got drive on it, that's where it's going to be. VSTIs like Contact 6 or Addictive Drums 2 have to be programmed a little bit differently to come up on screen and make this work. Um, this has come up unhighlit, and all the assignments I've already pre-made on the SL25, so the first six are the symbol volume controls, the first six sliders. And the way this is working, if I can get into the list, is enable only when effect configuration is visible. So this just has to be on the screen at all. It doesn't have to be focused. It's focused now, but I'll put it out of focus. I'll touch on the main screen. And I've still got control over those parameters because of the way they were programmed, as I showed you there. So I select kicks from the arrange page, and I'm going to open a compressor on there. That immediately closed the floating window that was the VSTI. And that was just another action from the action list that was added to that single button. So opening plugins, setting the parameters, or recording the envelopes, are now done from the two latch and read buttons. There are four EQs on this channel. I can toggle select them on the up and down arrow keys. I can use the fast forward and rewind on the controller. I can choose them with the mouse as well, obviously. But I can also type the first letter of the name of the plugin and that'll select it too. If you want to make a MIDI controller simple to use over all of your plugins, always set the same parameters to the same controllers. So my far right controller is always the volume of the plugin. So as I flick through them, you'll see that it's, it's in the middle there, changing the volume. Next plugin changing the volume. And on the mag, which has the, probably the most awkward volume control you could use with a mouse. The two right hand pads toggle up and down the presets for the selected plugin. So with the forward, I can go down through the plugins and quickly select through the presets. And the read button closes the effects chain window. All these things can be done with the mouse too. I think if you're using hotkeys, you need to have a system for using hotkeys. And if you're using a MIDI controller, you need to have a system of how you lay the controls out on the controller for the plugins. Let's open the plugin and get some envelope lanes and see how we can view those envelope lanes to keep the screen tidy. So at the moment the plugin is in the foreground so I can adjust the parameters. I've got it in latch so it's actually right in the envelopes. But I can't see them so if I go down to control Z that will zoom all the envelope lanes under the track and bring the track to the top of the screen. Notice the plugin's not highlight anymore so my hotkeys will work on the main screen or the mouse obviously but my hotkeys will so control home and end take me up and down those. Control and E turn them on and off. It's quite easy to toggle between the two like that. Apple and E turns them all on and off. Alt Apple and E hides them all and shows them all. Now we can just delete or turn two of them off. Then this key, the Control, Alt and E, only shows you the ones that are active. E will show you the last touched parameter, whether you did that with a mouse on the plugin or whether you did that with a controller, that's the last thing you touched and it's a useful one. Let's show all envelopes again. I'm just going to delete that one envelope with Shift and E. 
or I can delete all envelopes on that track with Control, Shift and E. For some reason, it doesn't delete them all, so I've had to loop and make a custom action, so you just have to press return a few times. I've opened those in read, and now I can adjust the parameters because there isn't any pre-recorded latch information on the envelope channels there. Okay, the envelopes themselves, you could draw them with a mouse holding the Apple key. That one's obviously stepped. I'm just going to quickly draw some information further down the threshold parameter and then I'm going to record with the controller. Um, I need to highlight the plugin first, use the letter F. Now that's in focus, I've got control over that. Press play, you don't have to press record. I'm going to drop out with the read button, this time I will. Okay, and I'll leave it running just to run over that information and make sure it doesn't write over it. Nope, information's still there. So I'm going to zoom back down to E, which is the last touch parameter, which was threshold. And seeing as we're only working with one parameter, we'll just zoom that down full screen. My right and left arrows will take me one bar forward and one bar back, but the home and end buttons above will take me to the next marker and back. Alternating between this and the decimal point, I can add an envelope point at each marker. Now with the Control Shift and R key, I can switch the markers to regions. They act differently to markers, and with the home and end key, I automatically get a loop for the section. Pressing Apple and Plus creates four points, and Minus and Plus on the number pad turns that up and down. It's really useful to be able to switch between markers and regions for lots of different editing reasons. Uh, Shift, Control and M for markers. Shift, Control and R. Again, they're probably custom actions. I hope that's given you a flavour of what you might be able to do with your MIDI controllers or with hotkeys. If you'd like to learn how to get some of these methods into your workflow, like and subscribe for the videos that follow and explain how to do so. Thanks for watching.